Hello YouTube, just a few more observations about the winner takes it all. Um, I'm not going to play it in out of face stereo just because the anomalies that I've heard don't really justify it. Um, it's more complicated than I first thought in the first video. Um, for example, there's a lot more double tracking of the piano than um, in the but tell me, does she kiss verse? In that verse, it's very, very obvious that there are two pianos playing. And really listening carefully, you can tell that, um, regardless of which edition you listen to. In the introduction, though, it's much harder to work out uh, which pianos are playing where. But I'm sure that there are two pianos playing during the introduction. So let's go on with the anomalies. I've caused a little bit of controversy with one of the writers on the ABBA Plaza website who suggested that if any of the ABBA recordings stereo uh, mixes have been changed then that would amount to remixing and he didn't think that any of the albums have been remixed for CD. Well I differ on that. Some of the recordings, notably Fernando and I Have a Dream and Now the Winner Takes It All do have different stereo mixes. Uh, there are minor discrepancies on uh, The Winner Takes It All between Mick Tretov's Gold Edition from 91-92 and uh, the original Polydor uh, CD version of Super Trooper from the 80s. Uh, the Super Trooper version uh, has the piano sort of up here on the top left-hand side. If you're listening to it on headphones, I know this looks a bit mad, but... There's a second piano that joins in at four seconds and about seven seconds playing low down bass arpeggios and probably at other points during the introduction as well. And it's playing up here on the Tretov gold version. It's actually playing in your right ear down here. And it's it's much more pronounced um, as such. Uh, it's much better blended in than um, the, the gold version. And also, uh, while we're talking about a better mix. Uh, the the Polydor version has Agnetta's singing voice much more diffuse. Um, it's in the same stereo position. By and large, the instruments are sort of panned in the same way, apart from that tiny little uh, oddity with the piano. But um, the the Polydor version certainly Agnetta sounds much sort of softer and probably more authentic as a you know as a, as an interpretation than the um the gold version there's quite a pronounced tape edit at 23 seconds depending on which version of the winner takes all you're listening to um it'll be either on the left or the right hand side uh it's buried quite deep down it's i don't think it's the main piano that's got the the, the tape edit in i think it's possibly um another one There's an edit during the word play, as in no more ace to play, uh, where the song goes from the first verse into the chorus. And it's like a, a new take is being introduced. Now, it's not actually during Agneta's singing of the word play. It's the, it's the backing behind it. And most notably, there's a slight change of EQ. It sort of goes duller halfway through the word play. So it's an edit in the instrumental backing rather than actually in the word play um, just before she sings The Winner Takes It All for the first time. And those are all of the uh, anomalies so far that I've heard on The Winner Takes It All, although it's been quite a, a confusing song really, um, considering that it's only two basic sections of melodic material that have been arranged absolutely superbly by Benny and Bjorn. Um, it's quite a complex recording, far more complex than I originally thought. So uh, at the end of part one, I said I thought it was struck quite straightforward. It ain't. <laughs> um, a while back, I received a message from a YouTube friend called GPATRS, whose first name is Patrick, um, about on and on and on. 
Now, as dedicated ABBA aficionados will know, that is the following track from the Winner Takes It All on Super Trooper. So I thought it would be um, advisable to tell you about it on this video. Um, at first, I couldn't hear it, but it's absolutely dead obvious once you're tuned into it. Uh, seven seconds into the introduction of On and On and On, just before... Uh, the rock and roll bit because you get those quite powerful chords at the beginning um, and then it goes into the, 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 the drums come in and then you get the main rock and roll backing now as those drums are coming in at seven seconds somebody shouts it's audible on just about any mix of Super Trooper even me with my ear infection at the moment which means I can't hardly hear anything in my right ear um, even me with my terribly battered French copy of Super Trooper, which I can only say I've got for completion, and any other edit of Super Trooper that, I, that I've listened to, with on and on and on, seven seconds, somebody shouts. It's a bloke, and it sounds like, yeah, just as he's starting. Now, I presume it was left on there because... It does actually sound like someone just about to get down into a piece of rock and roll. So it doesn't sound entirely inappropriate. But thanks for Patrick for pointing that out because that's a really good fun one. So listen out for that one, folks. And I will see you on my next video, which is about a surprise purchase of mine that I managed to find on eBay.